If you are watching this late, I'm going to have timestamps in the in the description box below. But the way you're going to get 12 months of nootropic education within 30 minutes is by watching this live stream. I have found that the people watch these seem to just get a lot, uh, grow a lot faster and don't have the same uh, repetitive questions over and over again. So let me know as you jump in uh, what your uh, what your questions are. And I'm going to start this thing off by talking about lion's mane for fitness. Uh, so fitness trainers apparently are recommending their the people that they're training to take lion's mane. Now lion's mane why it may be beneficial pre-workout could it could be focus could be anxiety related but as far as um benefits to your body composition building muscle losing fat no studies in fact there's very few studies actually showing it does anything cognitively speaking but um we we know just you know when you don't have studies the next best thing you have is anecdotes and uh really like uh, lion's mane for that specific purpose defeating anxiety um also uh, i i found that you'll you'll find like better work-life balance at the end of the day you'll um, be be able more so to look forward to the next day, which is uh, which is um, obviously something that, uh, that you want to do versus having to grind it out. I was using a lot of the racetams when I first started working. I didn't uh, I didn't kind of feel aligned. Something felt out of alignment. Lines made really help that out. And then I used ashwagandha, bacopa, and some other nootropics afterwards to really help out with um, anxiety. Is Alcar a really good nootropic? Hey guys, what's up? Uh, is I, um, for most people, no, you won't see, you won't speak to a lot of people that would mention Alcar within their like uh, favorite five, but some people do like it for focus. You may get a slight focus boost. I uh, just know there is a difference between the different forms of, of carnitine, like L-carnitine, acetyl L-carnitine. So acetyl L-carnitine mostly used for cognition. You may get that slight, uh, increase of focus, but then when it comes to L-carnitine, that's more so used in the sense of losing fat. They say it helps apparently fat get to the um uh, just be be more available uh, available excuse me burned as fuel uh sorry i forgot to click those questions got to click them from libya what's up uh most effective rastam without the choline source fennel prastam is always going to be the most effective um rastam out there prastam we know is the you know, the foundational nootropic out there that's going to help with learning, going to help with energy, going to help with being able to remember things. And man, ambition, time. don't underestimate how, how, you know, how it can really just keep you focused and um, getting to work. But as far as time, if you want to consider that like a time, even though it's really not, it's to be used in the, on those emergency scenarios when you're going to, uh, you're, you're going to have a day when you're not feeling like your best self. Maybe you're jet lagged. If you ingest 100 milligrams of phenyl time, guys, no joke, it works. You will feel driven. You will feel energized. I, I and like the physical energy you get from phenyl time is incredible. I still use it once or twice a week along with midafinil. I took it yesterday. And the problem with, with phenyl, phenyl time is like it's not slightly stimulating. It will stimulate you the whole day. You'll probably not be able to sleep if you're super sensitive to it like myself. But um, 200 milligrams is, is sometimes a common dose. I can get away with taking like 70 to 80 milligrams. So that's one. But um, outside of phenylprostam, another one, I, um, something which you could get away with, you know, so like a rastam, you could get, get away with taking without choline would be oxyrastam. Likely you should still notice something as far as alert, um, alertness, feel a little bit sharper, be able to have um, a longer, slightly longer workday. But strange, strange question. I think the only people that would maybe ask that question are people that don't respond well to ingesting choline. I think most people do respond well to ingesting choline. You want to get some choline in your diet, either in supplement form or, of course, we know egg yolks. What's a good stack for programmers? Um, good question. Ashwagandha, you'll find uh, for programmers specifically some sort of mix with mix of stimulants along with something that can help you with anxiety and just help you to feel centered. So for that reason, uh, caffeine and alphenine is a great stack. So keep it that like um, su super simple. Uh, of course, I uh, got uh, new Tropics people. They've got the best. I think, I think they're the only product which has the caffeine and L-phenine in the proper ratio. The proper ratio being one caffeine to two L-phenine. So 100 milligrams to two, 100 milligrams of caffeine to 200 milligrams of L-phenine. Uh, but they also have the vi like they have it in the um, reverse ratio, which is 200 milligrams of caffeine, 100 milligrams of L-phenine. That's probably better for working out. So that stack's going to be very good for you. Something like Nupep could also be good. It'll make you just like slightly more alert. And uh, yeah, I'd be mindful of um, just how you're responding to stimulants with it. Cause I would uh, like, like for example, and, and this includes like gamers as well, your judgment may be somewhat impaired when you're using stimulants. So be mindful of that. You'll get to know, know yourself. Some people respond well, some people not so much. Like me, when I'm dealing with like any, anything sophisticated or when I was in school, I didn't like caffeine so much when it came, came to exam time. Caffeine was more so good at, you know, keeping me awake and what so. And guys, uh, don't forget to look at the description box. You'll get some discount codes and of course help me out, which I appreciate. 
Does it matter if I have alpha GPC 600 milligrams in one dose in the morning, or is it better to split it up during the day in two doses? Uh, splitting it up during the day, 100%, that's going to be better. And 600 milligrams, that's quite a large dose. Not everyone's going to be able to get away with it. If you ingest too much alpha GPC, uh, you could be setting your up for could be setting yourself up for being in a bad mood. But I've not found anything wrong with uh, taking too much alpha GPC. I didn't notice like withdrawals when I stopped taking it, but a good sign that alpha GPC's work, um, alpha GPC, excuse me, is working is when you stop using it, um, your word recall won't be as good as um, as it was when you were taking alpha GPC. So I'm currently taking it about 150 milligrams three times a day. That's what works for me. Does tribulus make you urinate more? Not that I found, but with modafinil and with some uh, some nootropics that are also um, just going to somewhat dehydrate you, then that will happen. Prastam versus Nupep, what's your go-to? It would be, of the two, in terms of effectiveness, Nupep is going to be more effective, but Prastam is going to be my go-to because if you all know something about me is I take a lot of nootropics, but I'm pretty conservative in the stuff that I take. I don't take a lot of risks. When there's new nootropics out there, I let everybody else try them for a good couple of years before I, I get on it. And Prastam, I'm more so comfortable with taking that every single day with Nupep, a good sign that... Um, a, like a good sign that you should be a bit cautious with it is that if you were to ingest it for like say two months straight, you'll start to build somewhat of a tolerance to it and you'll need to take time off. And when you take time off Nupep, you don't feel yourself in the sense of you feel a bit of brain fog. So I find that slightly uncomfortable. And for that reason, uh, Pras time is always going to be my go-to. I will, I think I will stick to Pras time as long as I'm alive. Uh, do you take garlic with carnitine to limit? No, I don't. In fact, I, um, I don't take carnitine. In, I mean, I'll take acetyl carnitine when I have it in stock, but I'm not I'm not bothered if I'm out of the stuff. I wouldn't reorder it again. It's like one of those nootropics. It's um, too inexpensive <laughs> that I don't I don't mind um, uh, getting it. Any intellectual work? Don't know if that's a question, Mo, but that's a man. That's that's a nice picture. That's a badass picture. Is there a better option than quality of mind for productivity? No, just some people don't respond well to quality of mind for whatever reason, or maybe they, they find it short lasting. Some people really get an energy boost. I found just talking to a lot of people about quality of mind, um, maybe younger individuals don't no notice it more so, but people uh, 30s, especially 40s, they they do get the, you know, like uh, the focus boost. Maybe it's the vitamin B, uh, maybe it's the L-dopa kicking in. Oh, tyrosine and mushroom blend and a small amount of caffeine for my morning work gets me flowing. Very nice. As, and yeah, mushroom blends, they're becoming increasingly popular. Going to work, especially when it comes to energy levels. Um, slight, uh, like you can expect um, expect to see that you start ingesting a lot of nootropics, uh, like, like mushroom nootropics. You'll feel a little bit less anxious during the day. They're good at handling stress. Not as powerful as something like rhodiola rosea and bacopa mineri. Rhodiola rosea and bacopa mineri, man, these two nootropics, you want to bust stress, you want to be able to just, you know, really feel sharp throughout the whole period of the day. I, um, I've been using this nootropic stack for years. It's super simple. Love it. I have found a lot of newer nootropics come, but it hasn't defeated that stack. Using that stack, bacopa mineri in fi uh, 500 milligrams and rhodiola rosea 500 milligrams sometime in the afternoon, like two o'clock PM. Uh, you'll thank me afterwards. Can we take menafinol every day for a period to accomplish a goal? See, you can do that with menafinil. It will help you work harder. Don't get me wrong. You will have good levels of concentration. We know menafinil very good for the mood, very st very stimulating. Um, also good good for task switching. You'll find that you're able to you know you can go from computer work to being on your phone to um, writing something on on a notebook. So it's great that way in the sense of just keeping you know like it's very it's very stimulating. But what's so is you lose the ability to reflect. And you'll notice when you're ingesting stimulants, you don't, you don't feel like yourself, like you don't daydream, you don't think, you don't procrastinate. And these are all good emotions that you want to have because it's going to, it it's what makes you human. It It's what makes you be able to have, um, have empathy, have a better understanding of yourself. And you'll find that you won't be working smart. Like, let's say if you were to, um, let's say if you have an exam, right? And you can get through all your material very quickly using using menafinol, but you won't actually take the time to better plan the right way to study and um, whatever works for you, if it's post-it notes or however you like studying. So it's hard to kind of, you know, um, look at everything from a, a bird's eye view, if that makes sense. Have you ever tried? Um, no, I have not, it, it sound, but it sounds interesting. Okay, what's the difference between the different uh, cholinergenic supplements like alpha GPC, acetyl L carnitine, and choline, choline itself? Alpha GPC, they say uh, you're more like you're more likely going to feel it, and I personally do believe that the three different forms of choline. And just speaking about choline itself, that you're going to find choline bitartrate, 
um, CDP choline and alpha GPC. And you can almost look at them like they're ranked in that order. So alpha GPC being the very best choline by tartrate being super inexpensive, uh, almost useless. I remember back in the day, like I've been using nootropics and consistently ordering from like 2013, 2014. They used to give you a tub of choline by tartrate when you ordered paracetam. I don't know if that happens anymore, but that just shows you it's it's useless. It's worthless. Uh, good thing is uh, people don't report many side effects with it, but it's also not that noticeable. So uh, once I had some money, of course, I, I use CDP choline. I like that a whole lot more. And alpha GPC, love it. Notice my nootropics work better. Notice my word recall was better. Notice I was just sharper there during the day. And I didn't feel as fatigued. And even, you know, just general mood, like you feel pretty not only cognitively taxed at the end of the day, but you're also not as happy. And you'll find that alpha GPC, it keeps you in a good, like, um, uplifted state, especially if you're using like benafinil, don't sleep on using alpha GPC. I took hundred milligrams of benafinil yesterday and I didn't use alpha GPC silly me until like eight, nine o'clock took five, no, it took 300 milligrams of alpha GPC felt great. It, um, my headache subsided and almost entirely. So I really appreciate alpha GPC, but the, but like, like I've said to all, all of you, you got to find your sweet spot with this nootropics. If you take too little alpha GPC, something might feel off. If you take too much, then you might feel off too. So be a bit patient with it. Nobody wants to be patient these days, it seems. I feel like I'm stuck in another world. I don't live here. Anything help. Hey, we've all felt that at one stage, right? It's normal. So keep moving forward. Uh, your thoughts on L-taurine? Great when you're using it with caffeine, using it with vitamin B. You'll find taurine in a lot of... Um, um, what do they call like energy boosting products, rockstar, like those energy drinks. And that's because of the fact like people say it can make like the energy boost from vitamin B and caffeine last a little bit longer and also ease off much, um, anxiety. I don't necessarily believe that to, to be true too much with respect to anxiety, but it doesn't hurt to, to just have it in your stack. Cause it's, it's pretty inexpensive. I, I actually have the powder version of, uh, the powder version of l -taurine, So I, I add like a little bit to my pre-workout again. I can't say if it does much or not. Mike, have you ever experimented with 78DHH? I am glad, Jason, you reminded me because it's one of those nootropics I have somewhere around that I've yet to try. So I appreciate that. And guys, many of you have asked me to review some of the uh, Nootropics Depot newer products. And I want you to know the good news, like uh, when it comes to their uh, Tribulus, they've rolled out some other supplements. They sent them to me. So I'm going to be giving those a shot. I'll keep you guys updated either in a video or a live stream. We all like the Nootropics Depot products. Um, you guys know that I say good things about them really, because there's nobody else that lives up to the standard and they've been around for so long, whereas most nootropic uh, sites out there, they've been shut down for, um, whatever reason. So we'll let you know how that goes. Do the rest times have such an effect on the adrenals and the central nervous system, or is the mechanism of action different to stims? So, um, I personally believe that the met, like to what extent it's different than stimulants, I don't know, right? Um, but what so is you can you can definitely tell as far as the way it taxes your adrenals. It's nothing similar to stimulants, like especially ephedrine, caffeine. I use that stack. A lot of you may have heard of the ECA stack for losing fat, guys. Your adrenals get taxed, and one of the ways that you notice that is that you're bloated. You have this unusual water retention kind of phenomenon going on. So I'm pretty comfortable taking with uh, taking the rest times myself. I would be, I would just be more mindful of something like L-tyrosine because when it comes down to it, Rastams aren't that energizing. More so, I mean, they're not that noticeable for a lot of people. But uh, if you think that you're missing out by taking the Rastam, by not taking the Rastams, you are missing out. The Rastams, I uh, can't say enough good things about them because that's where the work ethic comes from. And a lot of people hit me up like, Mike, what's the key to be disciplined? You're so disciplined. I don't know the answer to that. So I've been thinking about that. What are, um, guys, what are your thoughts on that? All right. Um, yeah, we can't answer that question. Did you experience like your lost ability? Like, you know, this word means your mind stopped responding. No, if you're asking if nootropics suddenly stopped working for me, that didn't happen. Uh, did I try cognance? I don't know. That's a good, that's a good question. It sounds familiar. You may want to remind me. Okay. Yeah. Guys, if we can avoid the typos, a lot of the questions would be a lot easier to read. ND, nah. Okay. Great question. So this is comparing the two forms of Bacopa. And I've not, I've not found any difference between them both actually. So it, um, the two that I've been rotating between are the Bacognize and the Synapsa. Both of them powder form, they taste almost the exact same. And I will say with, yes, yes, I talk about things about nootropics, people, but wherever you get Bacopa, 
you should likely see good results. It's not like lion's mane and you want to be super picky to get the eight to one yule extract. I really like the, all the different forms of Bacopa that I've used over the years. I've seen really good results with as far as improving my memory, but especially fighting off stress. Like Bacopa, ingest a little bit of it. You feel centered. You're suddenly aware of everything in your surroundings that you maybe weren't aware of before. And uh, it's make it just makes for a good nootropic to take sometime in the afternoon to really help you ease off stress, to help you forget anything negative that may have happened. Helps you get you refocused on those important on important priorities that you know that you got to get through. But Bacopa, what um, a lot of people do report the demot the uh, the demotivation. In fact, Bacopa and ashwagandha, and maybe third would be lion's mane, would be the most the three most demotivating nootropics out there, according to some people. But if you're just wired like me, you're wired in a way that you're gonna put in the work regardless of whatever you take, and there's no nootropics that can demotivate you. Then I think you should be okay with ingesting something like Bacopa. But if not, then I would balance it out. Use some stimulants to offset that demotivation or use some, some of the rest times that should help you out. How do you get burned out? Um, okay, how do you get out of a burned out state? So there's there's actually supplements out there for adrenal support. And surprisingly, they have things like uh, vitamin B. Uh, maybe you'll see kelp. You'll see phosphatidylserine. Just some good natural healing nootropics. But the reality is they really won't do too much. It's just it doesn't, um, it doesn't hurt. And let's say if you really are low of energy and you're trying to resist taking that caffeine, that's a good chance for you to use um, L-tyrosine, like that good uh, substitute for caffeine, something like 700, uh, 750 milligrams of L-tyrosine. That's how you're commonly going to find the capsules or in 500 milligram capsules. And that should really give you that energy boost that you want without giving you the anxiety and without uh, causing any future insomnia. But some people do, some people do actually feel anxiety from L-tyrosine. So you got to try it yourself. All right, please, if someone can recap his stack. I've done it on my Patreon. My full stack is there. But as far as the racetams, I'm taking Prastam, Anorastam, um, Oxyracetam, not Pramorastam anymore. I'm taking ro uh, Rhodiola Rosea, Bacopa Mineri. Some sometimes I'm taking Ashwagandha. I'm taking Nupept. I'm, of course, taking Alpha GPC. And then I have a lot of, like, uh, and then I have some stuff which I take pre-workout. I'll always take a pre-workout supplement blend. Just because, I mean, I, I like the, the the taste. I don't mind some of the artificial sweeteners. And they're going to have things like creatine. They're going to have some beta alanine, some um, citrulline malate, some good vitamin B12 to get me going. Take some whey protein. And then before bed, I'll have my stack, which is typically like uh, tribulus terrestris. I'll use shodan and I'll use lemon balm extract. Lemon balm extract, that, that's a great um, nootropic. Keeps you calm. Doesn't really have any bad side effects, but it's not super effective. If you want something more effective, then you can consider taking the Shodan form of ashwagandha, which you'll typically find in pills of 120 milligrams. And like, there's real studies showing that Shodan will help you with um, further, um, yeah, further instances of waking up in the middle of the night, feeling up more restored, more rejuvenated. So it's a pretty inexpensive nootropic. I would definitely check that one out. And yeah, I hope that was helpful. It's hard to remember everything I take, but if, I mean, um, However many nootropics that you think I take during the day, multiply it by three, and that's the amount that I'm taking. I'm just joking. All right, what is the most strongest euphoric stack? Uh, Kava, Phenibut, uh, those two Those two are going to be good. Yeah, 5-HTP, that's going to be good. Uh, so Sobatiamine, I've not seen much from, and Mucunipurians, I've not seen much from. Hope that was helpful. Is NAC effective for lightening skin? No, but I remember reading L-tyrosine can actually darken your skin. I don't know if that's, that's um, true. It's hard to really pinpoint what NAC is actually doing because you'll find like different reviews about this product. Some people use it for OCD. Some people use it for um, addictive behavior. Some people use it for better energy. Some people who notice they have bad, like bad, um, um, they're just bad reactions to food can get away to, with taking NAC. So it's hard to pinpoint with that, but I'm, I have seen it in a number of pre-workout uh, pre -workout products as well. So look out for that. Ritalin versus modafinil. It would be modafinil because with Ritalin, it's just like what goes up goes down. And with modafinil, you kind of crash at the end of the day, but it's not like you build up such a bad tolerance. Like something which makes me pretty comfortable with taking modafinil and phenylprastam, so to speak, is I've gone periods when I've taken them every single day for almost two weeks or even three weeks. And you get off of them, you don't feel strange withdrawals, but I've been there. Like the concerta withdrawals that I felt, and guys, keep in mind that kind of falls, you know, that's, those all fall into the same category. Vyvanse, um, Adderall, uh, Concerta, right, Ritalin, etc. I've not used Adderall, by the way, but Concerta, going three months on it at a low dose of is like 27 milligrams, which isn't too much. But afterwards, you feel social isolation. You feel slower. It's harder to read. You're just massively depressed. And so since that experience happened, like 2015, 16, I'm like never going to touch um, Concerta or anything similar. But Modafinil, pretty good with. Just you got to know 
how to use minafinil the right way, if that makes sense. Now, just I would use it for traveling, especially because it gets you through that fatigue, will make you productive when you're on the flight. And, uh, you know, just really because you're in a better baseline mood, you can get through the, you know, you can tolerate standing in a long line and you know, all that pain, which comes with being, being at an airport. Do you know of any studies if Tonka Alley increases red blood cells? No, nothing about this, but interesting topic. All right, what nootropic would you recommend for anxiety? Love the question. So I like um, ashwagandha probably the most, but ashwagandha, of course, we know is going to have some cons to it. Like demotivation also doesn't help too much with energy. Some people say that ashwagandha can help boost testosterone levels. That's not been the case for me. And uh, what else? Althenine, that's good, but it's short lasting. So althenine, you want to look at like if you need something to help you with anxiety right now, then 200 milligrams of L-theanine, that's typically how you find the capsules. That'll really help. With ashwagandha, it's more like you got to be a little bit patient with it. Most people have to use ashwagandha for about a week to, the, to notice the benefits. So be patient with that one. Uh, with ashwagandha, very long half-life. So the way you're going to see best results is taking it twice a day and spreading out your dosages. It's not practical, but like a good way to take ashwagandha is like 10 a.m. and then 10 p.m. But a good practice, like which I, which I in many cases fall was like, uh, once at two o'clock p.m. and once again at six o'clock p.m. Some people notice like a slight acute effect, like they take ashwagandha and they notice, you know, feeling a good way or feeling a bad way. But most people have to be a little bit patient with it. And then there's some more of them. Uh, did you try synephrine? Yes, I've tried it. It's a light stimulant, not that not that impressive. I see it out there in some pre-workout products. All right, best nootropics for brain problems like thinking, understanding, retention, all executive function properly. Prastam and choline, that would be it. And then just being mindful of your choline intake. If you're not taking any nootropics, it doesn't hurt to add some choline. And if you're somebody that's experiencing fatigue, you got to get that fixed. You got to get your energy boosted. So rhodiola rosea could be working well for you. And this is difficult to treat because people have different issues. Some people are just more anxious than others. Some people are driven, but they need to, you know, they have to put one foot on the brakes a little bit sometimes to calm down in their thinking. So it's, it's to each their own, but really be mindful of stimulant intake. Stimulants are very overrated. If you can get away with not ingesting stimulants like caffeine or too much coffee, you're going to live a much better life. You're going to have less ups and downs. And I've seen a lot of people eliminate caffeine and they actually are able to get more work done, surprisingly. Let me know what your thoughts are, are on that. Do you think 510 milligram of SR Ritalin pairs well with a few espresso shots? If there's a reason to, I wouldn't mix the two. The only reason I would mix the two, let's say, for example, like minafinil on a pre-workout or something like that and caffeine is if, if I was using it for pre-workout purposes because you're not going to get that caffeine energy boost from other substances. And so that way it, it can be good. But just be careful with it because both of them are going to elevate your heart rate and you obviously don't want to feel uncomfortable. Man, why are we getting all these questions about Ritalin? <laughs> I know why. It's from the same guy. Um, you're going to find that uh, Ritalin's going to last. It's going to last longer despite being SR and ephedrine. It's going to suppress your appetite a whole lot more. And you're not going to feel that same mood boost. Yes, I am. I'm, I'm in Canada. We all have to be. Are you taking some... So, some many tea boosting herbs, my voice. Oh, sorry. After taking so many tea boosting herbs, my voice has changed. I sound like Mickey Mouse. How can I get it back to baseline? Do some voice practices. They're out there going on YouTube. Working on your voice works. <laughs> I tried Prastime, L tyrosine, Bacopo, Lion's Mane, Omega 3, 14 milligram. Okay. I don't feel anything at all. Am I non responder? There's a good chance that you're a non responder. The good chance also that, you, that uh, you're not educated enough on nootropics to know that these aren't the most effective things in the world. Try uh, try raising the, the dose of L-tyrosine, and I would encourage you to try these on a fasted state, then see if they do something. But omega-3, for example, you're probably going to not notice much from. And same thing can be said with uh, with uh, lion's mane and then bacopa. And um, yeah, of the of the couple there, um, yeah, well, I'm really surprised that you're not noticing concerta. So it just it happens to some people. All right, well, um, th uh, thoughts on glycine. Good for pre-workout purposes. I, I don't think that it, it, could, it does anything otherwise in terms of um, cognition. And yeah, I, I did ignore you because of your typo. So sorry about that. Is it true that ashwagandha can make you numb? Absolutely. Demotivation, number one reason why people don't take ashwagandha. Still worth trying though, and I try different forms of it. So there's a KSM-66. That's one of my favorites. And then I use Shodan, which is the other form of, of um, or sorry, one of the other forms of ashwagandha, higher in the percentage of withanalyze, which also means it's more relaxing. And so for that reason, I'll take it before bed. And I find that taking Shodan before bed, it doesn't seem to negatively affect the next day. Does a choline source with Concerta do anything? If so, how much choline, how much choline should go with it? I would take 150 milligrams twice a day, maybe three, maybe three times a day. And to be clear, like 
Choline goes well with anything, regardless of whether you're taking a nootropic stack or you're not taking a nootropic stack. If you're not eating egg yolks, I would be ingesting choline. It's an important nutrient for overall brain health, for fatigue, for energy, just clearer thinking, better planning, better executive function, all that stuff. NLT, um, NALT versus L-tyrosine. Great question. So N NALT is N-acetyl-L-tyrosine versus L-tyrosine. And with a better form, this isn't just me. I've uh, browsed a lot of opinions, looked at every every site out there. It's going to be L-tyrosine. You can consider N-acetyl-L-tyrosine to be marketing hype. We hate that marketing hype. And it's uh, typically going to be sold in lower doses than L-tyrosine. So you're going to find N-acetyl-L-tyrosine in like 350 milligram doses, whereas um, L-tyrosine, more common is going to be like 500 milligrams up to one gram. You're, gonna, you're just going to notice L-tyrosine more so, and it's going to last for much longer. You're going to get good, a good level of concentration for 90 minutes with L-tyrosine. With N-acetyl L-tyrosine, probably 30, maybe max 45 minutes. But what so is the only, I would say, good thing about N-acetyl L-tyrosine versus L-tyrosine is it hits you a lot faster. So N-acetyl L-tyrosine, you, know, you can feel it within a couple of minutes. L-tyrosine for most people, it's like a 10, 15 minutes. Again, it's not a huge difference, but for some people, they just want that quick, you know, energy boost that you would get from spraying some nicotine. Then you can get N acetyl L tyrosine. And for a good period, I actually mixed both of them pre-workout, took the uh took some N, N acetyl L tyrosine and then took some L tyrosine as well. And didn't really notice anything magical with this. So both nootropics are, are great, but L tyrosine, it's gonna be amazing. I, you, I mean, you really can't compare the two. But yeah, you'll still unfortunately see N acetyl L tyrosine in a lot of energy products out there, like of course five hour energy. Again, it's gonna be marketing, right? I will top, will taking 500 milligrams of now foods, tribulus 45% provides sleep benefits. Most likely it should. That's what I've seen from other individuals. We are lacking research on this one as well, unfortunately, but I've seen really good results with that. Better sleep, waking up more energetic and being more aggressive. You can feel when that's happening. And that's something I love about tribulus. It's kind of, I wouldn't say it's a super low dose, but you can, I mean, most individuals can get away with taking one gram. I'm currently taking two grams, taking one gram um, in the morning one gram at night. And I've not noticed any negative side effects from taking uh, from taking tributous trust just almost every single day. I'm taking like, I'm talking like 320 to 340 days of the year, no side effects, but it's also not super strong, but I can really feel the aggression. Do I feel the increased, like any signs of increased testosterone? It's kind of hard to say. It's, it's interesting though, like on this channel, people really want more, more information on testosterone, but I'm not trying to shape this into a testosterone channel. I don't want to sell out. I want to talk nootropics. That's what that's what my passion is about. It's not just about testosterone. It's about cognition, better thinking, better planning, making money, right? Uh, being able to learn and learn, learn, learn. All right. I've not tried the first one. Bromatane, I did a full review on it. It was okay. I mean, you can get you know, you can get a slight boost of drive, a little bit more discipline, but I didn't notice too much from it. Um Tatiana, cool. Uh, is she just an influencer hustling people or she's real? Well, I believe she's, she's real. And, and what they're referring to is somebody who uh, sells houses, as do I, and they have an Instagram page and a big following. But based on the way that they talk, they have sales skills unquestionably. So, I mean, are the, are the numbers that they report real and factual? Probably not, but that's okay because everything in marketing is going to be lies anyway. Not really a nootropic, but we're taking... Uh, um, yeah, there's a good chance that it would, as well as, of course, ingesting some, some uh, creatine. Best nootropics for brain inflammation and brain swelling. The, so one nootropic that we haven't talked too much about but does have some studies backing it is pramiracetam. Tastes absolutely awful. It's hard to find in capsule form as well, but it can do something with it. And um, otherwise, some of the other racetams can be good. Jinkle biloba is something you may want to try. But either way, I wouldn't really like treat your brain any different than another brain, for example, because many of the same nootropics that we discussed, they will be good for overall um, brain, brain inflammation and help you. All right, what supplements could help my cousin with autistic slash ADHD behavior? Something to calm the mind, but super, super safe. Omega-3s, don't sleep on that. I would, you know, make sure that you're getting your omega-3 fish oil from a good source. Make sure it's not from uh, like a bad source because there was a lot of talk about fish oil coming from polluted, uh, like polluted um, bodies of water. And if you go on examine.com, it should still be there, but they actually listed the different nootropics that were that had good results with ADHD. Anything which is going to be good for concentration likely is going to be good with ADHD. With autistic, not so sure about. Um, I've taken, uh, have you tested? I have not, but it's interesting. Cool. 
I've taken linesman, it's great, but once I stop taking it, it seems like my memory recall isn't the same thoughts. When I take linesman, I feel like different parts of my brain is working. You may want to consider trying mindfulness meditation. Five to 10 minutes a day really made a big difference with improving my memory along with using linesman. So I'll give that some shot. Uh, nope, I haven't tried that one. Okay, why would people in the fitness industry use L-theanine? I use it for my anxiety and whatever I hit. And whenever I hit my gym, hit, sorry, whenever I hit gym, my jitters for anxiety come back. The reason people would in the fitness industry would likely use L-theanine is when they're combining it with caffeine. We know people in the fitness industry or fitness in general, pre-workout products are very popular. That being said, uh, the ingesting pre-workout products is, is a way to ingest more caffeine than what you're accustomed to. We're talking about the doses of uh, 200, sometimes 400 milligrams of caffeine. I typically take 300 milligrams of caffeine. So because we know that L-theanine is going to help with anxiety, it's going to help to eliminate or to some extent eliminate the um, the negative crash that you may experience from caffeine. That's the reason why people would be using L-theanine. But as far as um, it, it having any benefits with body composition, building muscle, losing fat, absolutely nothing. It's an amino acid. You're taking such low doses. How could it really do anything? So if anything, it's for calmness. It's for a little bit of Focus so people actually get a slight focus boost when they use it because it helps you to relax. And where that combo could be especially good is if you're somebody that works out like in the later portion of the day. If you're somebody that works out in the, in the morning, right? Um, like myself, that's okay. You wake up pretty clear minded. It's like you haven't had such a bad day to disrupt your focus. So that's when using caffeine and LT and it can actually be pretty good when it comes to performance. Uh, have you tried rhodiola crenulata? See, I've tried most things. Just <laughs> people are asking me, you know, me about some others that I haven't. Yes, I have. And I noticed the results weren't the same as the rhodiola rosea or the other forms that you're going to find out there. It was still decent, but don't expect it to be any better than what you're accustomed to. Uh, like a common dose of, of uh, rhodiola rosea is going to be 300 to 500 milligrams once a day. More uh, but better is taking it twice a day. If you know, yeah, uh, people ask often, like, are the nootropics that you can take once a day that last the whole day? Hardly anything. And if they are, then they then those are the same nootropics that you should not be using every day. Things like phenylprostam, things like modafinil, things like L-DOPA. So those nootropics that you have to take a couple of times a day are likely going to be the ones that are going to be healthy for you long term. Uh, not that common, but lion's mane. You hear about strain, you hear about the odd side effect that's different than other individuals here and there. Uh, what's the craziest experiment with nootropics you've you've done? If anything, it's like mistakes. So for example, I remember the time, and I'm not recommending this, but I would I thought that taking Phenibut would lower my heart rate because, of course, it helps with anxiety. And so I used it along with minafinil because minafinil and especially phenylprostam, they they do increase your heart rate. So I was thinking, okay, why don't I take some Phenibut to decrease my heart rate? And that, that, that didn't happen. With Phenibut, I learned that it actually increases your heart rate. And then I felt very uncomfortable. Of course, you know, it kept me up to some extent. And that just, for me, the way that I learned a lot about nootropics, not that I'm recommending this, is that I tried nootropics before I did a lot of my homework on it. And, and so my approach was like, why don't I try a neutro why why don't I try a nootropic for 30 days, make my own assumptions based on what I've experienced, and then do my homework on it afterwards? And that's and that was a lot easier because when I started with nootropics back uh, back, you know, 2014, very heavily involved in them, there wasn't a lot of information out there about nootropics. It was just like new pep, super popular, <laughs> but you didn't get to know like side effects, the things to expect. There was no uh, video explanations of it. And that's the yeah, that's the reason why kind of these experiments happen. Otherwise, I try like the mega dose of fish oil. 30, maybe like 30 grams of fish oil every single day. All the good, the good that came with that was nosebleeds. Lots of them, better cardio, but nothing. Yeah, I'm sorry that my, that my crazy experiments probably aren't that interesting. And guys, I'm, I mean, I'm not trying to hide anything. That's just it. After taking tribulus for three weeks, my kidney hurts. Then I read a study saying it could cause damage. Is this likely the cause? For sure. I would either lower the dose or switch to a different, uh, yeah, a different brand. Don't mess with your kidney. Is Adderall too bad for you? I like the way it makes me feel. Yeah, obviously. Uh, and if, if you try Modafinil, you don't like it as much as Adderall. Of course not. With Adderall, it's so mood boosting. It's it's so stimulating. So it's so is yes, it's bad for you. And if you don't believe me, I mean, just you. Most people most people have a have a friend that's gone through Adderall withdrawals and needs help. Feels like crap. Feels slow. Doesn't want to get out of bed. All those feelings. And so for that reason, that scared me enough to try. I mean, to consider trying Adderall. I could never see myself using it. Maybe you just take it for a day for you for you all, but. Yes, it's, it's bad for you. Uh, the appetite suppression, the boost of focus. You don't feel like yourself, right? Uh, did you chose to get in sales because your ceiling is higher in terms of income? What was your expect, experience at U of T? Is the BBA program hard? BBA program, it, 
yeah, it's extremely difficult, but with, uh, with going to a difficult school, it just helps you learn time management, helps you learn discipline, keeps you away from bad distractions that you're going to encounter in your twenties, like girls, like drinking and so forth. So again, I'm, I'm, I know I'm, I'm pretty happy about that. And in terms of why I got into sales, see my parents have been top real estate agents. If you look on my last name for my whole life, pretty much. So it was almost a no brainer of like, why don't I try getting into real estate? See how it goes. It, it didn't, you know, only took over here six months to get your, to get my license. And most areas out there, especially in the US, I mean, you can get your licenses and it's like two to four weeks, pretty simple. And then, and then what so is it all comes down to training. But what's great about real estate sales is you can learn um, everything. A lot of the principles are proven in different markets and different locations. It's a sales business. You have to get out of your comfort zone. And I personally love sales because you'll find that like, sales is so intertwined with personal development it's like you the harder you work on your personal development the harder you work on bettering yourself through nootropics uh through exercise through having good practices like the better your sales become because you learn more things about just you know yourself in terms of the, the hard things you got to do so for agents out there what i train them on is making their calls and shooting video and then following up of course right you got to be aggressive thanks for the question <laughs> and uh what are the best non-stim nootropics supplements for ADHD? I mentioned a couple of Bacopa Mineri, um, fish oil is great, Rhodiol Rosea. Make sure you're ingesting your choline. And uh, Jinko Biloba has some good studies backing it as well. I remember reading something about lion's mane, but I don't necessarily believe that um, that to be true. And then you see some of these other nootropics out there when it comes to ADHD, uh, things like um, Subroxy which I did experiment with, but the, my, and that's a kind of, I wouldn't say a super new, a super new nootropic, but within the past couple of years, it's become somewhat pro popular. And with Subroxy, the only kind of critique I have is you had to take quite a bit of it or mega dose it for you to get the response that you wanted to when it comes to um, ADHD. And I know people don't want to hear me talk about working out, but you got to work out when it comes to ADHD, you got to get that concentration boost and make sure you're investing in a good multivitamin. I like True Hope. It's over a hundred dollars a month, but it re works really well. Um, are there ND products that are very good for working memory? Bacopa Mineri, it's going to be the best for working memory. doesn't matter what, if you get it from ND or not. And Pras time is going to be great. Thoughts on high dose, one gram, Tongat Ali, one gram, Fidogia experiments. Interesting. People are seeing really good results with this combo. I'm using this combo myself. My video is going to come on, at la on next week. Not super impressed, but it is decent. Sigma is a great product by um, Gorilla Mine. Really enjoying that. I feel healthy with it, surprisingly, because you hear a lot of bad news about, or you hear a lot of bad press about Fidogia agrestis, since there is some research out there that it may lead to toxicity, but that's very light research, nothing to be too concerned about. So I'm enjoying the snack too much uh, so far. Haven't noticed too much of a, uh, too much of a response, of, uh, response like I was expecting compared to some people talk about these two things. But I assume that for people that are elder, I would say older than 45, you're likely going to see really good results with this, uh, yeah, with this specific stack. Uh, Hitman, yeah, sorry, I saw that question. I don't know the answer to, to that one. Ashwagandha, al alphenine, or GABA for anxiety? It's going to be ashwagandha by far. Ashwagandha is like, it's the best thing out there for anxiety. And, you know, th throughout periods of using ashwagandha and then not using ashwagandha, I've learned that my body, I or just for my, you know, overall life satisfaction, I'm better off with ashwagandha. Just my my baseline mood slightly increases. And, and if it means I'm doing less work and taking less action, I'm actually okay with that testosterone can have a positive effect on cognition work either. Oh yeah, there's no question about that. Testosterone, it will make you sharp. When I was on TRT for that short period, you notice it instantly. Uh, better better work ethic, you're sharper, you're ambitious, you need less sleep. Like it, it is, yeah, there's there's no denying the fact that it is gonna be very gonna be very helpful. But then again, you can make the counter argument that having low testosterone can help you with your work ethic too, because low testosterone means low libido, which means no distractions from, uh, um, from females out there and just uh, focusing on staying in your lane. I have tried um, intranasal bromantane, just so you know, although although I didn't discuss that too much in the video, but either way, I didn't see too much of a uh, too much of response. All right, cool. Talking about 500 to 750 milligrams of GABA a day. Good. It's decent for anxiety. Some people notice actually slightly better energy levels with it, kind of like taking magnesium. Have you tried MCT oil? Yes. I'm one of the few people that actually, I didn't respond that well to taking MCT oil, surprisingly. Um, you'll find some studies saying that females, for whatever reason, don't respond that well to it. But we have to keep in mind, like, this is a saturated fat. And I'm somebody that grew up slightly overweight. It's been very difficult to maintain the weight loss that I've been able to achieve. And so when I see saturated fat like that, yes, you know, it's going, I'm going to have to make it a part of my macros. I'm, I'm not that down for it personally, but I know a lot of people that really like MCT oil. 
Anything that you could recommend for super focus that lasts long uh, with caffeine, alpine, and snack? Okay, with this, so something that worked really well for me was when I experienced that crash from taking caffeine, which is typically going to be about three and a half hours following ingestion. Then I would use something like L tyrosine, about 750 milligrams, and that would just make me feel very productive, very focused for a good five hours from the start when I um, just after I ingested my caffeine, if that makes sense. All right, cool, cool, cool. I try lines made me super depressed. What could be the reason? Maybe it's gotten you in your head and it's reflecting on what's what's going good and what's not going good. Maybe it's maybe it's positively making you aware of something that you haven't been aware of. I don't know. It's a good question. Cool. What stack are you on right now? Are you great fluid in your shop? Man, I don't feel sharp at all. I was questioning whether or not I should do this live stream, but it's a great way to do get out of your comfort zone. And of course, I want to bring value to you guys. Guys, make sure you watch these live streams because it will get you so much nootropic information. You can see the recurring questions. Like people ask great questions that probably you have in mind as well. Um, I mentioned the stack that I'm on uh, before. But I mean, before getting on this um, live stream specifically, I mean, I took the stack a few hours ago that I mentioned, but Copa Mineri, uh, Rhodiola Rosea, a little bit of Ashwagandha, use Pras Time, use Alpha GPC, and just something I've built a great habit. Like I drink a lot of water. I drink over a gallon a day. I've always been that way. If I go an hour without drinking water or something just feels off, um, kind of wired in a strange way. Um, and sorry, did you have another question? Yeah, I've not tried that one for brain plasticity, but sounds interesting. I'm going to make it, put it part of my notes. Did you know if any of the Ras Times meal, um, could, could cause hyperthyroidism or increase T3 slash T4 levels. I highly doubt it. So my thyroid has been off for a long time. I think like nine, 10 years. And so I take nootropics and then I also monitor my thyroid levels every six months. And I, I have found nootropics have made like no difference. Of course, it's common sense. The things which are going to make a difference are going to be, um, eating more calories, eating less calories, doing something different with your meds for, for example, right? All right, may, may Nupepti be better for older people who, for boosting memory than Prastam? Yeah, there's a good chance of that happening. I think um, Nupep would be better for most people when it comes to boosting your memory, though, um, versus Prastam. It's just that Prastam, like I mentioned, it's going to be overall or seem safer just in my in my own opinion. Maybe when when the product comes, so you can stay out for the, stay tuned for that. If people want me to make the make the review, just let me know, guys, or put it in one of the comments in one of my videos. Like I still look at all the comments, even though you guys see like I like the comments. Uh, or I put a heart, that means I'm acknowledging it. I will respond to it eventually, guys. So don't worry about that. Best administration of Nupept. Na um, nasal drops are going to be the best. I remember before they used to have, uh, the, I mean, there was somewhere where they carried these like sprays and you just notice them more. But who knows? Maybe it was just like the shock to the system because you're spraying something up your nose, right? And and don't think for you, Nupept is short-lived. Nupept is short-lived for everybody. That's the reason why people dose it like at least a couple times a day. It's one this, you know, irritating thing with Nupep, but the way that you want to, you, the way you want to take your Nupep is with the expectation, like the next 60 to 90, 90 minutes, I need to do something where it's going to require me to be on point, where me to performing optimally. That's when I'm going to take my Nupep, like, you know, just before this live stream, for example, and just some Nupep. So that's the way, you know, you want to kind of better take advantage of it. Uh, what's your thought on St. John's warts? Um, overrated. Yeah. Like you mentioned, it's, known to be somewhat dangerous for some individuals. So for that reason, I have stayed away from it. But uh, you will find maybe like 20% of people like say it's been the the miracle pill for them as far as mood stabilization, maybe people with with bipolar, they've seen really good results with that. That's kind of common. Uh, what are your thoughts on CBD and THC? So I personally, I just don't respond well to it. I, um, I wouldn't even say anxiety, but more so like general overwhelming concern that gets me out of my actions makes me more in my head than I would like to be. So perhaps it's just be, because of the work that I do and because there's just a lot of stuff that I need to do. I, I'm, I, yeah, I would rather stay focused than take something which could be able to take away from that and maybe make me more creative. So I'm personally just not a fan. Hey, Michael, I'm starting a new sales gig soon, man. I, I love sales. If you haven't tried sales or, or, you, or you think, or, you know, sales is a bad rep or you may be scared of it or you tell yourself like, I'm not good at sales. Trust me, you're wrong. Introverts make the best salespeople. I am not an extrovert by any measure, but introverts have a good ability to learn. And it's a way that just forces you to get out of your comfort zone. Like I can, you know, I'll, I'll talk sales all the time. So guys, if, if you don't follow me, uh, follow my other page on Instagram. I make like 10 stories a day, just talking sales, personal development. So you can find some good value out of that. But uh, getting to your question, I'm, I'll be drilling cold calls on, um, on my day. Any suggestions for an ideal sales stack? Yes. Yeah, so I would like my, um, Routine, uh, take your caffeine, 
hit your workout. And then the next few hours you want to be focused. You want to be prospecting. I would be really careful with any herbal nootropics, any adaptogens that, that you may take that are going to relieve stress. I would use those somewhere like two to three hours after you start your sales calls, when you need to get that reset, you need to kind of uh, just, you know, clear out your mind, then get you back on the phones. Pramorast time isn't super popular, but that's something that can just help you get through the repetitious boredom because what sales is in many cases, repetitious boredom. As you know, you got 99 no's and then you got a yes. You just have to get through the 99. And so anything that you can take to help you through that. Lion's Mane, it could be good, but the only issue with Lion's Mane, I, I noticed you're, you know, you're more interested in people than you should be, which is a good thing. But in a sales context, like if you got to hit your numbers, you're going to find yourself having unnecessary conversations with people because it's, it's good that way, it, you know, but one issue or, you know, one thing you want to look at pros and cons is like the ability to delay gratification. So it's good in, in many ways, but just be careful with that. What's the best way? Uh, what's the best supplement for better speech? I've been mixing my words a lot lately. Alpha GPC, Pras time, also Anaras time. That one's really going to be good for uh, word recall, social anxiety as well. And um, if it's anxiety that related, then I know we talked to Ashwagandha a lot, but that one's also also decent. Uridine monophosphate, nine MeBC. I don't know the entire stack, but uridine monophosphate. See, I respond very well to alpha GPC, so for that reason, I don't ingest uh, ur uridine because the way that I look at it is like. You kind of take one or the other. I'm enjoying alpha GPC, but for those of you that don't that don't respond that well to alpha GPC, you may want to try uridine. Even when I've tried um, uridine by itself or with alpha GPC, I didn't really see any good results with it. And nine MEBC kind of overrated. Maybe you'll notice like um, a slight memory boost, if anything, maybe a boost of drive, but it's rare. Um, alpha GPC versus DMA. I'm going to say alpha GPC. You guys know how I feel about it. Is CBD oil just type? Nope. It works. I mean, it works very, very well for some people that just, you know, they, they have issues and they need to use something like that. Right. Uh, what is your top recommendation? Anti-anxiety besides Althini, um, lemon balm and ashwagandha. It's going to be Bacopa Mineri. You're going to feel centered. You're going to feel calmer, but those few ones that that's that, that you mentioned over there are good. Also, the different forms of ashwagandha are things that you want to check out. There's a lot of nootropics out there for anxiety. So I've talked about this on, in many of my videos, but sometimes, guys, it's just using something to actually using something to help you focus will actually, in many ways, help you with anxiety because you're not going to have as much time to be in your head. So there's different forms of anxiety which you may want to do your homework on. Uh, what nootropic stack would would you take for studying for an exam? I mean, I'm. Okay, good question. I've made two videos on this. I've made a video on the best nootropics for studying, and I've made a best. I made a video best nootropic for cramming. The key to this is don't change the stack any more so like on the day of the exam. I don't know why people want to take a big risk and take something like modafinil or not take it, on, even though they haven't been accustomed to it. It's like if you've been using Bacopa every single day prior to the exam, or you've been using ca caffeine every day prior to the exam. Yeah, that's what you do on the day, day of the exam. Don't take any. You no know, risks in the way of like adding different nootropics that you haven't already tried, right? And um, yeah, I've talked about this in, in that video, so I'll just say go and get to that. New, new pep is something like it will help you to actually get studying in the first place, and that's sometimes all that you need to get you going. But then you also want to have nootropics which are going to help with memory. The issue with uh, a lot of nootropics that will help you with memory do not help you so much when it comes to just general drive, and people don't like to admit it, but like, hey, hey, focusing on studying for a long time isn't easy. It, you, 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 you do need like a boost of drive and being able to stay consistent. Uh, thoughts on Joe n n on the nicotine vape pen. I didn't know that he's doing that. Um, I still use the spray. I used a little bit of the spray today. I'll take like three milligrams of it. So I don't know. I think it's kind of gross in some ways, but there's not enough bad information out there for you, for you to say that they shouldn't be doing it. Uh, best adapt adaptogens you recommend to everyone. Uh, it's going to be Rhodiola rosea. And it's going to be um, Bacopa Mineri by far. Um, remind me what your question was. Have you tried DMAE? I have not tried DMAE. Nope, not yet. Do you lift heavier? Do high volume? Do you want to be bigger? Is it more muscle? Good question. Yeah, I mean, everyone wants to have more muscle, be, be leaner. I think I've accepted the fact that I may have reached my genetic potential or be somewhere there because I can, I can lift pretty heavy, but it's difficult to gain weight without gaining fat as like an endomorph, like they call it, if that's still a thing. So uh, the way that I, I lift typically is like six to eight reps and uh, compound lifts. So um, deadlifts, squats, bench press, pull-ups. I really like compound lifts, but more so it's like I'm working out with the purpose that it's going to help me with my business, going to help me with, with productivity, going to help me with performance. I started to run a few years ago. It's been really good at just keeping me lean. 
Um, I mean, like muscle mass aside, because I realize for all of you hard gainers out there, you want to stay away from cardio. I like cardio. There's health benefits. There's focus benefits. You're going to be in a better mood again, better. It's you know easier to stay lean. And I think people get in a bad habit of either doing all cardio or just doing all weights. And you have to like find the thing that you hate doing and you should do more of that, right? Uh, no, I haven't released my uh, nout nootropic just yet. All right, should I just pop a Vivance before I sleep and then grinding hard on a tight deadline? Would I be causing significant? Okay, well, like Vivance, for example, this is a stimulant. I mean, it's a hardcore stimulant. It's going to keep you up. So what you're asking is, is it healthy? Of course, it's not healthy. But hey, if you have to do it, it means you're going to be okay the next day, right? So it's just depending on the scenario. There have been you no know, time when like a few months when I had used, I mean, Concerta almost, almost every day. I was getting like three, four hours of sleep. I mean, I still made it through. It's just that afterwards, after that period of not getting sleep, then you make up for it because you have all the sleep debt and you're able to sleep eight, nine hours a day for a number of days until you've kind of um, made up for it and all that sleep debt. How do you, how to rebuild your brain after many years of Mary Jane use? I feel dumber. That's a good question. I'll, I'll give this some more thought because uh, people, people do ask about it. Oh man. Uh, we got to block this user. Yo, how many? Yeah. I don't know about the kidney question guys. Sorry. We're getting a lot of spam comments. Is methylphenidate stronger than phenylprostam? In many cases. Um, no, I think. I think probably not. Phenylprostam is it's pretty it's pretty strong. I think with with uh, methylphenidate though, it hits you faster. With with me anyway, it takes me about like ninety minutes for phenylprostam really to start working. Um, and the best way to take phenylprostam is under your tongue. Don't sleep on that. That's why I typically get it in the powder form. Uh, something like like I mentioned, eighty to one hundred milligrams. Put it under your tongue. Leave it there for a good minute. And you'll notice it working, and then you feel like like the energy boost, the physically the the physical energy boost. It's it's a noticeable phenomenon, right? And then what's so is um, the the other, you know, the other kind of comparable nootropic to that is modafinil. But with modafinil, you don't get the physical energy boost. And along with that, you get a little bit of like uncomfortable anxiety. You'll find with phenylprostam, you feel more like yourself as far as your own emotions, as far as you're still able to daydream. You can still take breaks. With modafinil, it's just hard to shut off. You can try taking a nap. It's very difficult. But I hope all of you did get value from this. If you didn't, or if I didn't answer your question uh, for any reason, then feel, then feel free to put your comment, uh, put your question below. The way that you can help me out is by uh, keep on sharing this channel with people, and don't forget to use the affiliate links in the description box below. You're going to get a bit of a discount, and of course, it's going to help me out. And I'm going to do my best to keep on putting out good content for all of you. And I appreciate you. We're going to end this, but we'll do this again sometime soon.